corporate profits down 20 to 30 percent. Normally I would say 40 or 50 in a hard landing, but this recession is so anticipated, I don't think a lot of corporations are going to be caught with their pants down, which is how normally you lose a lot of money as you're not prepared for something that happens. Um, commercial real estate, you know, I'm not informing anybody in this room of something I don't know, but office is a problem. It would have been a problem anyway, but, but change of lifestyle and COVID makes it an even bigger problem. Financing rates going up make it a problem. I'm worried about credit tightening the next six to nine months. Obviously the banks um, are going into an economic period that if in fact we get a recession, their balance sheets are already impaired, not from where they usually lose money, which is loans, um, from the fact that the Fed convinced them that they're going to keep rates to zero until 24. Uh, so they bought a bunch of treasuries yielding one or two percent and now they're carrying them at five. So, th so their balance sheets are impaired. But if we get in a recession, uh, then the real losses comes, which is stuff like credit cards, commercial real estate, that kind of stuff. So those would be my, my worries. Stan Druckenmiller's recent strategic moves in the financial landscape serve as a powerful beacon, illuminating the potential perils and opportunities that lie ahead in the economy. His track record, marked by a successful tenure at George Soros' Quantum Fund, lends immense weight to his opinions and actions. Druckenmiller's expression of concern echoes that of other influential financial figures like Bill Ackman and Bill Gross, creating a chorus of caution that is hard to ignore. His recent positioning is particularly intriguing and insightful. Druckenmiller's bearish stance on longer-term bonds, a reaction to the growing unease over government debt. Federal government's national debt has surpassed a record high of $34 trillion. Meantime, the U.S. government's debt has topped $34 trillion for the first time ever. The figure is the total amount of outstanding borrowing by the U.S. federal government accumulated over the nation's history. Well, U.S. debt topping over $34 trillion for the first time ever. This coming as a deadline looms for Congress to reach a deal in order to avert... Contrast sharply with his bullish bets on two-year notes. This shift especially coming from someone known for his foresight, is a clear signal to investors and market watchers. His prediction of a 20% to 30% drop in corporate profits and a real estate downturn is a clarion call to be prepared for potential upheavals in the market. What makes Druckenmiller's insights even more compelling is his candid criticism of policies and decisions at the highest levels of economic governance. His critique of Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen's decisions as potentially the biggest blunder in the Treasury's history, highlights the gravity of the current economic situation. His projection of the government's interest expenses soaring to 7% of GDP by 2043 if interest rates stagnate is not just a cautionary tale, but a wake-up call for policymakers and investors alike. With a net worth of $9.9 .9 billion, Druckenmiller's portfolio adjustments are not just personal financial decisions, but indicators of broader economic trends. In this video, we're about to discuss the specifics of his top three holdings, getting invaluable insights into how one of the most influential figures in finance 
navigates the intricate web of economic forecasts and market dynamics. This exploration is not just about understanding Druckenmiller strategies, but also about learning from them to better prepare for the financial challenges and opportunities that lie ahead. All of AI is not going to make it through whether we have a recession or not because they haven't separated the wheat from the traf shaft yet. But I do believe, um, unlike crypto, I think AI is real. It's probably, it could be as transformative as the internet. It, it's a huge thing. And I, I think I've argued publicly that if staples can go up in price in a recession, why can't a company like NVIDIA, if they go up, if they go up, if their orders and earnings go up 70% in a hard landing, which is what I think would probably be happening, it's not clear that me that NVIDIA goes down despite the lofty valuation level. History has proved that if you do, if you have very good earnings in a recession and they're sustainable, if they're not, the market somehow figures it out. Those stocks will do just fine. So um, we have some longs, we have some shorts, and uh, the AIs have sort of dominated the long portfolio for five or six months. In the vast expanse of Stanley Druckenmiller's investment universe, the captivating tale of a 41 stock portfolio unfolds. With the spotlight shining brilliantly on NVIDIA Corporation, ticker symbol NVDA. As of the third quarter of 2023, NVDA claims an impressive 13.65% of the portfolio, and the reasons behind this bullish stance are nothing short of exhilarating. NVIDIA, a favorite surf spot for investors, justifies its substantial premium through a remarkable surge in revenue and earnings growth. The company's performance has been nothing short of stellar, with two standout earnings beats this year. Druckenmiller, the maestro of market waves, draws parallels between investing in stocks with towering valuations and the thrilling world of big wave surfing. The NVDA investment thesis remains robust, anchored in the relentless high growth trend that the company continues to ride. In the latest quarter, NVDA surpassed expectations with Q3's revenues of $18 billion, exhibiting a phenomenal 205% year-over-year growth. The company's adjusted EPS of $4.2 reflects an extraordinary 793% year-over-year surge, surpassing its own revenue guidance offered in the Q2 earnings call. Generative AI demand has been a major tailwind, propelling data center revenues to $14.5 billion, representing 279% growth year-over-year. The recovery in gaming demand also contributed, with revenues reaching $2.86 billion showing 82% jump year-over-year. Year. Additionally, the impact of cryptocurrency mining on GPU demand, with Bitcoin recovering, adds another layer of strength to NVIDIA's prospects. NVIDIA's management forecasts a promising Q4 revenue of $20 billion and a gross margin of 74.5%. The insatiable demand for its offerings is evident in the robust pricing power and growing remaining performance obligations. The company's improving balance sheet with increased cash and decreased long-term debts further solidifies its financial position. Next on the list is Kuan Incorporated, ticker symbol CPNG. Kuan emerges as a beacon of opportunity within Stanley Druckenmiller's portfolio, claiming an impressive 12.75% weight as the second largest holding in the third quarter of 2023. Despite recent market turbulence, Kuan's investment thesis remains robust, blending innovation and growth potential in the ever-evolving landscape of e-commerce. The company's stronghold in the South Korean e-commerce market, often likened to the Amazon of the region, defies conventional expectations. With the rapidly growing fulfillment center network, Kuang stands as the largest online retailer in South Korea. A market poised to surge from $196 billion in 2021 to $291 billion in 2025, reflecting an annual growth rate of 10%. What sets Kuang apart is its impressive financial performance and profitability. In the last year, the company's revenues soared by 21% to $6.2 billion, showcasing a customer base expansion to $20 million, a remarkable 14% year-over-year increase. Notably, Kuang's free cash flow of $1.85 billion in the last 12 months, coupled with a robust 8% free cash flow margin, outpaces industry giant Amazon. 
Kulang's EBITDA trend is equally compelling, reflecting a positive trajectory with an EBITDA margin of 4.3% in Q3 2023, a substantial improvement from the negative margin of 0.6% in the previous year. The acquisition of a far-fetched holdings adds a strategic dimension of Kulang's growth story, providing access to the high-margin luxury fashion industry. In terms of valuation, Kulang presents an intriguing proposition for investors. Trading at 1.07x fiscal year 2024 revenues, the company appears as a bargain compared to Amazon, which trades at 2.5x forward revenues. With an expected growth rate of 13% annually, outpacing Amazon's projected 12%, and the potential for a 59% upside based on a revaluation to its three-year average PBIS ratio, Kuang stands as a compelling growth play. As the company continues to execute its strategic vision and capitalize on the flourishing South Korean e-commerce market, Kuang seems poised for further success. Investors looking for an innovative, profitable, and undervalued player in the e-commerce space should keep a close eye on Kuang's journey ahead. Let's turn to none other than Microsoft Corporation, ticker symbol MSFT. Microsoft takes center stage as a third largest holding in Stanley Druckenmiller's portfolio, commanding an impressive 11.53% weight in the third quarter of 2023. This tech giant, with its unparalleled market position, resilient revenue streams, and forward-thinking leadership, emerges as a standout investment in the dynamic realm of technology. Microsoft's prowess in enterprise software and cloud services positions it for continued growth. The company's strategic focus on generative AI technology investment is expected to yield returns through customer attraction and adjusted pricing. With 2024 sales growth estimates on an upward trajectory driven by a rebound in cloud growth and AI copilot monetization, Microsoft presents an enticing investment opportunity. Microsoft's Q1 2024 showcased remarkable improvements beating revenue expectations across major segments, notably with Azure re-accelerating to 28% in constant currency. The expansion of Azure, particularly fueled by AI workloads, bodes well for the company's cloud growth. Despite geopolitical tensions impacting guidance, Microsoft's prudent approach to spending and better-than-expected profitability and growth in operating margins instills confidence. Microsoft's incorporation of generative AI extends beyond Azure, encompassing various software applications. The introduction of AI assistants like Copilot enhances user productivity, with the company maintaining a flat operating margin despite rising AI-related costs. Microsoft's commitment to AI investments reflects a long-term strategy geared towards higher future revenues. Amid challenging economic conditions, Microsoft's M365, including Office and Outlook, emerges as a stable source of growth. Enhanced security features in the premium E5 suite incentivize enterprise upgrades, projecting low double-digit sales growth for Office products and cloud services. With less than 15% of the user base utilizing the premium suite, there's untapped potential for steady growth over the coming years. Teams, Microsoft's collaboration tool, extends its reach to frontline workers, fostering growth and stickiness. The Microsoft 365 F3 suite, tailored for frontline workers and teams' widespread adoption among Fortune 100 companies, contribute to its appeal. The bundling of offerings and increased usage, particularly in custom applications, positions teams as a product with high switching costs. Microsoft's robust financials, highlighted by a 57% year-to-date stock increase, justify its premium valuation. The forward 12-month P by E ratio, now at 33.2x, reflects the company's stickier enterprise software revenue streams and long-term upside from AI capabilities. While slightly above the three-year median, the multiple falls within the established range. Anticipated improvements in margins and earnings growth in 2025, coupled with the completion of the Activision acquisition's full-year financials, reinforce a positive outlook. Microsoft's sustained benefit from increased enterprise spending on generative AI positions it for potential sales growth surpassing market expectations. Consequently, a buy rating is assigned to MSFT, underscoring its resilience, innovation, and enduring potential in the ever-evolving tech landscape.